clean easy. As Michael said, my name's Paul Tonkey. Now, there's nothing special about me. I'm just an ordinary guy. I've got a bit of a belly and a small solar panel. I used to dream about being five foot four, but since drawing clean easy and being told to dream big, I now dream about being six foot tall. Anyway, first, a little bit of background. I joined Clean Easy whilst working in London as a shop fitter. Because of the nature of the job, I kept moving. That meant blanket dropping new areas. I could only put out 150 catalogues a week, which I did in the early morning, and my order value was always around £150 a week. It took me over a year to reach the 10% level. Now, you didn't expect that, did you? And by then, I'd moved back, to London, uh, back home to Lancaster, still only able to put books out in the morning. After being laid off as a bathroom fitter, I decided to go full-time with Clean Easy, as at 53, who employs someone my age. But it was the best thing I ever did. I spoke with my upline, Dave Burwistle, and we put a plan together, which was so successful, I earned over £9,000 in the next 12 weeks. Scaggins top retailer for three consecutive <coughs> periods, and that was in 2006. I had a fantastic customer base which paid me well and gave me as much time off as I wanted, especially after I met Joe in May 2008. In June 2009, I left England to live with her in Guernsey. I took the Friday afternoon ferry and arrived in Guernsey at tea time. By the tea time Saturday, I had all my books out. <laughs> We were Gavin's top personal retailer in 2010, winning his top retailer trophy seven times during the year. We were also Clean Easy's top retailer, as Michael said, being awarded the VIP trophy together with a trip to New York. That's over £10,000 in bonus. This year, we are again Gavin's top retailer, winning his trophy eight times. In the last two years, our income has been in excess of £70,000 with our own personal retail, accounting for more than 60,000 of that. <laughs> if you're thinking, oh, that's all right for them because we live and work in Guernsey, let me just tell you a little bit about the place. Guernsey, if you don't know, is a small island off the coast of France with about 24 square miles of land and around 20,000 houses. The population is just over 60,000, which makes it similar in size to English towns, and cheer if you come from there. Torquay, <coughs> Stafford, and Rugby, Limerick in Ireland, <laughs> and Livingston in Scotland. There are other distributors too, so if Joe and I can be clean easy top retailers on a small island, what can you do in the UK with 62 million houses? If you want to know how we did it, shout, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, here's our system. I put out 150 books a day, five days a week. I did this persistently and consistently for the next 18 months. Joe turns the books around and gets the orders ready for me, which is a massive help, and I'm asking for your help now. Would you please say, after the count of three, thank you, Joe, you're a star and give her a massive round of applause. <laughs> you ready? One, two, three. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you John. Thank you, John. Thank you. One of the most important items in our retail system is an A5 reporter's notepad and a four colour pen. The colours being black, blue, green and red. I use black to write the street name at the top and then the house numbers or names that I'm dropping to. When I collect the books, I put a black diagonal line through the number for got back unopened. Blue for looked, a red circle around the number if I haven't got it back, or a red cross through the number for people who don't want another book, and a green stripe for an order. The two colours I'm most interested in are red for outstanding books and green for customers. 
And of course, people who only look through the books may buy in the future. I go back to stragglers twice. After that, I call for them when I'm delivering orders in the area. If you get your book back on your first straggler visit, put two diagonal lines through, and then after your second visit, three diagonal lines through. That way, you will also keep a record of how many times it takes to get your books back. When I write up the addresses to go around the next time and get to a previous buyer, I put a green dash above the number or a red one for an outstanding book. I then go around the addresses seven times, building a list of customers who order and eventually striking off those who don't. If you do the same, you'll create a fantastic customer base, which you can list on your computer. <laughs> if you use a colour printer, you can print your lists with the house numbers already colour coded. When we put our catalogues together, we don't close the snappy bag, I do that as I walk down the garden path. To stop the bag from splitting, I put the snappy end through first. Never ever put your fingers through a letterbox without first holding it over your other hand. You never hear the dog that bites you. <laughs> when I collect the catalogues, I open every bag there and then and look at the order form. This saves us a massive amount of work later. It's easier to open the bags on the way up the path than it is to do it at home. Also, we don't miss any orders or those without an address. From 18 months' work, we now have 1,800 customers, which we work from 500 catalogues. If you break it down, that's 100 customers a month, or 25 a week from 750 books. That's 700, uh, 725 that didn't buy, so that's nothing special. We retailed nearly 100,000 pounds this year, which is only £55.5 a customer, or just over a pound a week. Again, nothing special. We've been able to make over £70,000 from our overheads of around £2,000 over the last two years. That includes the internet ordering and easy reach, so it's not a massive price to pay. There's recently been talk about doing long drops. We do them every week, although I must stress that this is to customer base only. Books dropped on Wednesday are picked up on Monday, Thursday for Tuesday, Friday for Wednesday, and this next part is a further refinement, Monday for Friday. Then, if I want to do any more blanket dropping, or <coughs> I'll put the books out Tuesday for Thursday. If Joe and I can do this, me being 58 now, anyone can. It's such a simple business, and it's so rewarding. If you can spend 40 hours a week working to make your boss's dreams come true, why not spend 40 hours a week making your own dreams come true? When I collect the orders, I keep them in order because if I've collected them that way, I'll deliver them that way. Before putting the orders together, I write down the street name, house number, phone number and the price. Then, before I set off to deliver them, I phone the first two. Tell them how much it is and say I'll be there in the next couple of minutes, a minute or soon. I never say a few minutes or five minutes because they won't get the money ready. I call the third one as I'm driving to the first. Everyone should have a hands-free kit in the car. When I get to the end, I turn round, phone up the missed customers and then set off towards home. To get the customer's phone number, I put another ABLE label next to our address one, asking for it. And because I collect my catalogues every day, I order every day. I also deliver my orders every evening. That's only Monday to Friday. You have to be disciplined and pay your account daily if need be, I do, otherwise it's easy to get maxed out. I'm always happy and smiling. Why wouldn't I be? These are the people who are giving me my income. If someone's carrying their shopping in, I offer to help. I take the newspapers in and the mail. They also build anything that needs to be put together so that it's assembled when they receive it. If I have to put a sorry I missed a slip through the door, I don't curse and swear because I have to go back tomorrow. I think, yep, that's another 24 hours to get a bigger order, and they've just had a reminder. If I see the customer through the window, I give them a big cheery wave. We're all in this business to make money, so to make more money, we have to do more. So why not put more books out and qualify for the Directors Club? Not only will your income increase, you'll also get free admission into the NIA in September. 
free admission to the gala dinner and the champagne reception. For myself and Joe, that's a £150 bonus, which for some people in these times is as good as a year's pay rise. My pay rise for last year was £2,500. Remember, to do twice as much doesn't take twice as long. There's no such word as can't. Add the letters RY and it becomes can try. For this next part, you can't really tell anybody or else they'll just take advantage. But take the word no out of your vocabulary. You'll be surprised <coughs> how much happier you will feel. Be polite. Politeness costs nothing. Ignorance, you pay dearly for. And never be grumpy. People hate being around grumpy people. And there's no such thing as inclement weather, only incorrect clothing. So, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it rains in England, so dress accordingly. In, in December, I hand-delivered Christmas cards to our customers, not with a catalogue drop, but as a separate delivery. This was an experiment to see what, this, what orders it produced in January. This first pickup of 300 books was £1,800, so it wasn't worth it. <laughs> Now, here's a thought to leave you with. If you want to earn a million pounds in your working life of 50 years, you need to start work on your 15th birthday and earn £20,000 every year until you retire on your 65th birthday. If you're not on 20000 a year now, your chances of earning it are very slim. Clean Easy has made quite a few millionaires and it's going to make quite a few more. So, you know, you're in the right place, at the right time, and in the right <coughs> business. And now, for the biggest tip that I, can any, that I and anyone else can ever give you is, never, ever quit. Thank you for listening, and come on, the winning team.